In this game, black is Gosegen and white is Takakawa Kaku. Gosegen starts by 2 3 4 points plus 1 enclosure, and Takakawa Kaku started with 2 star points. Now it's white's turn, immediately approaches the corner and attaches from bottom, bumps, connects, Hanes. From here, Gosegen tries to turn it into a avalanche variation. White plays away from the corner and grabs a big point. Gosegen approaches the corner, defend, slides into the corner and pincer. This pincer is saying, I'm gonna let you take the corner, but I'm going to take the outside. Of course, black is going to take the corner if white offers it. And this is a very common joseki. From here, black would usually hane up like this and white ataris. When black connects, white captures this stone. But in the actual game, black decided to grab some extra points first and hane it up. White, of course, has to cut this connection and capture this stone. With the next move, black splits over here. This is acting as a ladder breaker, but also trying to apply pressure on these three white stones. White, in order to be thick, captures this stone, and black approaches this white corner. From here, if white wants to be safe and simple, then white could Atari first. When black connects, make a two-space extension. This way, white is settled and white doesn't have to worry about the avalanche joseki. But Takagawa Gaku decided to challenge Gosegen, the master of avalanche, the avalanche joseki. Gosegen welcomes this joseki, white Ataris. This is just a variation. And from here, there are some variations, but black chose to play this particular variation. White makes a turn. When black comes out, the most common one is this. White cuts, black ataris. When white extends, black blocks. When white goes out, black makes an eye over here. White tries to erase that eye. This is all just the joseki. When white plays here, black extends, white jumps, and black ataris. When black plays here, White's common answer would be something like this, but in this game, Takakawakaku played over here. If you look at the board, black took three corners and white got a great influence slash thickness. So, black played over here. This move means black wants to, by attacking white stones, slowly leak into white's potential to erase some of white's potential. While doing that, also maybe grow something over here. White peeps first, black pulls back, and white small knights out. Black's proper move from here would be this jumping out, but white would get this two space extension, and black still needs to run, but white could play this Kosumi to apply pressure on these stones, but also trying to grow over here. That's why. Gosegen, instead of playing here, played this two-space extension. Now, if white doesn't answer, black can pull it out and try to attack white stones. If black completely plays away from here, then white could simply capture everything and be very thick. So, black plays here, white has no choice but to answer black, and black attaches over here. From here, white could have played this, and when black bumps, white can extend. When black extends, white extend one more time. Black, another extend, and white corner is completely alive, so white could attach over there to maximize this part of the board. But Takakawa Gaku wasn't satisfied with this result. That's why when Gosegen attached, he hunted. Black cuts, white extends, black extends, and black's goal is to take away another corner to get four corners of the board. White hanet, 
black hand is back. When white connects, black Atari, white extend. When black extends, white has no choice but to Atari this down. From here, most amateurs will want to play this Atari or even pull out this one. But this is not that good. This is okay, but there's a better way to play it, which is this small X. From here, if white dares, to capture this down, then black can either jump down or even safer, play a Kosumi, then this is not alive. Black can use this floating group to leak into white's potential that way. So when black played here, white pincers this down. Now black has no choice but to capture this down and take away another corner. Now that black has too much points, white needs to do something, so white wants to expand as much as possible. Now you may be wondering why doesn't white attach over here? It sounds like a great variation, doesn't it? White play here, and black probably plays here, then white plays here, and black might answer and white grow like this. But the thing is, it was back in 1957. The players liked to leave some Ajis over here. If white immediately attaches, then all the Aji is gone. If white just one space apart, then there are still some possibilities over there. So it's just difference of the time period thing. Don't get too critical. So when white plays over here, black immediately peeps this. If white connects over here, then black is going to attach and destroy this part of the board. Of course, white doesn't want to see that. So when black peeps, white extends. This stone is going to help out if any fight happens over here. Black harness and this stone is still emphasizing this push and cut over there. White cuts in order to get a sente. Why is this stone going to guarantee a sente to white? Before we move on, black needs to answer first and white is able to play away because if we don't have this exchange, then black playing here, white needs to capture this stone. And if white plays here, then black is able to come out like this. But if we have this exchange, then when black pushes in, white capturing this stone is also attiring these two black stones. So black has to capture it. Then white, if white wants, can play here. Since white doesn't have to worry about this push and cut anymore, white comes back and strengthens up this part of the board. Black hannes, white, another attach. Usually, we'll see something like this. But when white attaches over there, black extends, white pulls back, black connects, and white connects. Next, black still pushes over here. White captures this stone and black captures this stone. Now, if white connects over here, then white is playing too slow and doesn't have enough points. That's why before doing anything over there, white pushes first. When black blocks, white pulls back this stone. This, first of all, it's quite a lot of points. And second of all, it's looking for a cut over here. But before black answering anything over there, black Atari's this stone, white doesn't have enough code threats over here. So white has no choice but to connect. Black Atari's, white comes out, black extends, and now white cannot extend over here because if black connects up over here, white cannot capture these black stones. Let me really quickly show you what's gonna happen. If black Atari is here, of course, white has to extend, Atari, extend, and boom, everything is dead. Black is connected, which also means these white stones are going to die too. That's why white cuts black off and black makes a turn. White comes out and black loosely surrounds these stones. Black doesn't even have to capture these stones. All black wants is some stones over here in order to reduce this part of the board. 
white Ataris, these two black stones first, black connects, white pushes, black Hannes, white, tightens up the liberties over there, black Ataris, and white captures these three stones. At the end, black got the sente and came back to fix the weakness on the corner. Now, if white wants this influence not turn into a piece of garbage, then white has to fight over here. So white has no choice but to cut. Black Ataris, white extends, black extends, white extends one more time, and black jumps. Since black has four corners, if black gets to live in the middle too comfortably, then white has no chance of winning. That's why white needs to pick a fight. This stone is trying to cut these two black groups off, and this is attackable, and later on, even these three stones are also attackable. First, black saves the most fragile stones. White jumps, and black jumps, and white Ataris first, black extends, and white extends. White is looking to get some thickness over here and cut off the connection between these stones and these stones in order to attack these stones. Now even we can see, if white jumps down, then these three stones are going to get severely attacked. But merely connecting like this is too passive. That's not how Gosegen plays Go. So Gosegen launches a counterattack. Because these two stones, at any time, black can cut the connection. Black is looking to, by attacking these two stones, maybe connect back or get some ice spaces. White extends, black jumps, white, small knights, trying to cut the connection. Black peeps first, then white connects, black bumps to connect everything together. Next, white peeps, black jumps, white peeps one more time, black Connect. Now white sees that it's impossible to capture neither of the stones, so white starts to go for the end game. Black also harness to get some end games. Black makes a turn, and it looks like both players are going for the end game, but out of nowhere, Gosegen pulls out this stone. From here, if white makes a turn, then black can simply push out. Of course, white has to connect here, and if black plays here, then it's impossible for white to completely surround these black stones. On top of that, white has too many weaknesses, so this variation is not good. If white plays here, then black can play this one, and this is impossible because there is a double Atari, so white has no choice but to extend over here. Black can even connect this back up if white plays here, black can Atari. When white connects here, black can move away because black got some thickness over here by abandoning these stones. In the actual game, instead of playing this or this, white played over here. Black connects and white cuts the connection off trying to attack these stones later on. Black forms a tiger's mouth White wants to cut the connection by playing this attachment, but black cuts the connection back. And white Ataris, black connects, white Ataris again, black extends. Then white pushes one more time, black cuts the connection, and everything in the middle is dead now. At this point, Takagawa Kaku resigned the game.